Um, welcome to our short presentation about our Connected Neighbourhoods, or OCN, which is a community development project jointly funded by Life Changes Trust and Stirling Council and aimed at creating more dementia-inclusive neighbourhoods in the Stirling area. My name is Richard Ward and I'm a Senior Lecturer in Dementia Studies at the University of Stirling and I'm one of the partners in OCN. And because our time is quite limited today, we thought we'd share with you a case study of just one of our projects, but you can find out more about the wider work that we've been doing over the last three years um, by visiting our, our website. And you can find that by Googling our connected neighborhoods. So o OCN is, is based on a knowledge partnership with the intention of bringing together different types of knowledge and expertise. So expertise by experience of people living with dementia and unpaid carers, has been central throughout uh, the project, but further informed by knowledge of research evidence from an academic perspective and expertise in dementia practice contributed by 14 partner organisations that work with people with dementia in the Stirling area and led by Artlink Central. So as part of my role on the project, it's been very much to ensure that OCN has um, been evidence informed by sharing findings um, from the wider research and also my own uh, recent research on dementia and, and neighbourhoods. And I guess if there was one particular finding that I would pull out from, from this research was the discovery that actually it's people with dementia themselves who are already having the biggest impact um, on creating more inclusive neighbourhoods. And so this was very influential on the, uh, the, on the work of OCN by focusing our attention on what people do to create change in their neighbourhood and then finding ways to strengthen and amplify the impact um, of their work. So to give you an example of how we've gone about this, I'm going to hand over now to uh, Martin Quirk from the Dementia Services Development Centre, who will introduce a case study of some of our collaborative working. Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Martin Quirk from the Dementia Services Development Centre at the University of Stirling. Um, so I was the uh, environment strand lead for our connected neighbourhoods and the project that Richard was just referring to um, where we did a commissioned piece of work for Stirling Council um, was um, I think the, kind of the, the pride of the, 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 my involvement in, in the whole project. So the council, Stirling Council had um, commissioned a report on the dementia friendliness or dementia accessibility of uh, city centre council buildings and some of the streets and spaces in between. Um, so we were uh, fortunate enough to win the tender. Um, within the, the project, they, they asked us to, to do this report and to consult with, with older citizens as part of the project. Um, but taking, taking on the ethos that, uh, that our connected neighborhoods has in the first place, um, we believe that the exper exper expertise and experience of people with dementia is central to, to how, you, how, how we operate. Um, and so we're guided by these principles of co-production, uh, the principle of nothing about us without us. So what we did was we flipped the, the, um, the whole overall process so that we put the participants that uh, helped us with the project actually in charge of the project. So they were they directed the project um, and, and undertook the um, environmental audits that, that we did. So we showed them the uh, brief that the council had given us. There was a list of buildings and places they wanted to go to. Straight away, the, particip the participants came up with their list, some of which matched, um, of what their priorities were. Um, and, and then we supported them um, in, in undertaking this, uh, this report. So because we have people with lots of different uh, abilities in there, we use lots of creative methods. So in some cases, we were doing a recorded walking interview. Uh, one participant loved wearing the GoPro camera um, we had some who uh, did some, some sketching, and so there was lots of uh, creative methods of, of collecting, collecting this data. Um, and we put this together as, as a report back to, to the council, um, and then this was unanim unanimously uh, ex um, accepted and celebrated uh, by the council. 
Um, but all the while, we had built up more connections with uh, some of the organizations around the town. The participants had got a real sense that they uh, were having a, a real say in the development of their town and their city, and to talk about the, the matters that were really important to them and get them placed on the, on the table of the decision makers of, of where, where they live. Hi, I'm Kevin Harrison. Uh, I'm the director of ArtLink Central, and we're a project co-lead on the Our Connected Neighbourhoods project. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about some of the creative and arts-led um, work that was involved in, in the Stirling City Audit. Perhaps you're wondering why talk about the arts in a project about making our neighbourhood or city a dementia inclusive one. After all, many of us have negative associations with the arts at school or don't feel confident in being creative. Rather than a talent, let's think about creativity as a muscle that we maybe don't use as often as we can to problem solve, to communicate, to connect and to see and share things that don't fit neatly into boxes. Uh, the arts offers the space to imagine the difference a project can make, the means to connect directly to people living with dementia, even when words lose meaning. They can provide an opportunity to build engagement within a neighborhood to tell its stories and those of its residents in meaningful and respectful ways. Um, so this strand of work for us has always been about um, supporting um, arts activity in the neighborhood that actually helps people to connect to their social environment and to the people around them and to place. Um, and so um, creativity and, and arts activity have been embedded throughout the audits using uh, filming, GoPros, audio recordings, sketching. Um, and a lot of our tools have been developed um, with participants to be much more like canvases, um, open spaces for expression and conversation rather than questionnaires and tick box exercises. And that was one of the most exciting things for us as a, as a, a team was to embrace how creativity could be embedded throughout the program and seeing that the accessibility and freedom of creative engagement as a tool for people living with a, a diagnosis of dementia to participate directly in all aspects of the program was so effective and inclusive. And it's rooted itself across all the areas of our projects from the conversation cafes to the modeling of the overall OCN approach. My name is Margaret Innes and I'm retired and I worked in Stirling Council in the social work department. I took an interest when I retired in befriending and that was all different types of people with different issues. There was isolation, there was dementia, all sorts of things. And I got contacted by a good friend of mine who worked here as well, saying, there's a project starting at the university, and I think you would enjoy this. So I applied and they accepted me as a volunteer. And from there, it's just gone from strength to strength. The dementia has certainly been an eye opener for me because I didn't realize how much effort had to go into finding things. For example, if you went into the town, the signage is very small. So if you were looking for a particular bus or anything like that, that would be very difficult. The signage in other places, again, is not conducive to people with dementia because the way the arrows are pointing and things like that. On the walks, we did various buildings and different sites, and they had a whole range of really good stuff and really awful stuff. Um, but we managed, and I really enjoyed that. And then I started taking out a very close friend of mine who had dementia, and we went to different social settings. So I tried very hard to take her places, but I used to do a bit of research first to make sure there was plenty of benches, toilets were handy, the walking, the pavement and that was okay for her. 
But before I joined OCN, that would never come to me. They've taught me so much about looking through the eyes of somebody with dementia. My name's Keir Stevenson. I'm the Police Development Manager with Stirling Council, uh, and I've got responsibility for, among other things, the uh, police development in the city centre in Stirling, as well as rural towns and villages. So, with this project, we were tasked in 2019, there was budget allocated, and we were tasked with making Stirling a dementia friendly city. So, not knowing what that meant or what we were really required to achieve from that, we felt that really getting to grips with where Stirling was as a city in terms of meeting dementia-friendly principles was, was probably a key thing. So that's really where we went with this. It was a very open and honest assessment that we felt was required of where Stirling as a city was. So... This, obviously, colleagues have, have talked through significantly what, what, what was done in terms of the project, uh, the outcome being the, the dementia-friendly Stirling report. So I think the first thing I would say from Stirling, it was an incredibly well-received report. Um, it was taken to full council in March of this year, and it was very well-received. Communicating and the council taking the decision that all future projects should align with the principles of, of dementia friendly. And that's the first time that, that, that kind of decision has been taken. Um, so it really gave us some clear and concise recommendations about how we should be taking forward improvements in placemaking in the city. So, some real solid recommendations for us to take forward. And it's also to help us shape our future plans and investment. The work that's been done has now been embedded within our city centre action plan for the next five years, and we've already completed spend at Stirling bus station with new flooring and information provision. So already we've seen some um, improvements made as a result of this work. There's further capital spend been allocated as a, an output of this report to deliver recommendations coming out of the study. And councils also took the decision to, to provide further funding to extend the principles out with the city centre area. So that would be into rural towns and villages as well. Such was the merit that they saw in the report itself. It's not just in money allocated itself to, to, to projects aligned with dementia friendly. I think the council really sees this as central to everything it does now. And I think that, that came out in the to ask from council that any projects or capital developments align to the principles of dementia friendly. I think as well as those practical steps, it's about the approach itself that was taken. This is local residents at its heart, uh, local residents living with dementia or carers, obviously. So it was getting experts in as well as people living with dementia to, to influence and give us recommendations. So it's a real co-production. And the councillors, again, felt that, that was a great approach and, and it provides us a model for, for going forward in the future. So I think overall, the report's given us a bit of a route map on how we improve the city centre and the wider Stirling area to make it more friendly, more accessible. It will support health and wellbeing, but also um, support economic growth as well. And one of the really interesting things aspects of this report as well. It was local residents that were involved in the working group. They looked at some of the recommendations through the eyes of visitors to the city as well. And Stillen relies heavily, its economy is, relies heavily on the visitor market and tourism as well as retail. So having that aspect as well from the working group was, was, was really, really important as well. So yes, I think it's safe to say that, that we were really pleased with the report at Stillen Council. I look forward to working in the group on an ongoing basis.